If Barack Obama does raise the Keating Five tonight, the McCain campaign will certainly paint Obama as going negative. Our fourth story this evening, Obama's restraint in not mentioning that when it comes to anti-Semitic associations, ties to Iran, and yes, terrorists, McCain, Palin, have Obama beat hands down. On Sunday, Democratic strategist Paul Begala reminded us that McCain sat on the board of the U.S. Council for World Freedom, the local neighborhood chapter of the World Anti-Communist League. McCain joining in 1982 after the Anti-Defamation League called it a gathering place for racists and anti-Semites with links to Nazi collaborators and right-wing death squads. As for Palin, she declined to walk out of her church on August 17th this year when David Brickner of Jews for Jesus said terrorism in Israel was God's judgment for rejecting Jesus. Palin's pastor, Larry Kroon, defends Brickner. What about the Alaska Independence Party? We may have mentioned this to you last night. Todd Palin belonged to it. Sarah told them in March, keep up the good work. Founder Joe Vogler openly urged violent secession. In 1993, according to Salon.com, Vogler planned to denounce American tyranny in a speech at the U.N. Well, how would he get a speaking slot at the U.N.? He got a different nation to sponsor him. Iran. Iran also hip deep in the scandal that brought down, yes, John McCain's Council for World Freedom, funded by a right-wing Mooney, Moon himself, chaired by the former general and CIA operative John Singlaub, illegally supplying Contras with weapons brought, bought from Iran. John McCain publicly claimed he left that group because of its activities, but the Associated Press reports his resignation letter referred only to his lack of time to be involved in those activities. He reportedly attended a 1985 event, and the group still used his name on its letterhead until at least 1985. Huffington Post reports it was 1986. If Iran ties and secession do not qualify as terrorist associations, there is this. In October of 1986, the New York Times spoke to a council official who said that the group had provided millions in supplies to communist fighters, literally including boots for the rebels in Afghanistan. Those rebels, now known better as the Mujahideen, who would later become the Taliban and Al-Qaeda, its veterans of the Soviet conflict, including Osama bin Laden, who McCain once promised to chase to the gates of hell. And if bin Laden is quaking in his boots at that thought, who knows, maybe those boots are Air McCain's. Joining us tonight, my colleague Rachel Maddow. Good evening, Rachel. Hi, Keith. Is there a substantive difference in the type of associations we're talking about here? Well, substantive in terms of politics, there's one very important difference. The Obama association with Bill Ayers, tenuous as it may be, has been the subject of multiple distorting direct political attacks by his political mm -hmm. opponents by the Republican ticket. So far, the associations of Sarah Palin with the Alaska Independence Party and John McCain with these uh, groups associated with Iran-Contra and other uh, strange anti-communist activities, including buying boots for bin Laden, possibly. Um, those things have been raised by observers and by outsiders. And thus far, um, uh, Obama and Biden are not going there. And that may be the biggest, most important piece of this story that these sorts of associations are seen as relevant, fair game, mm -hmm. central to the political attack on Obama from the Republican side. The Democrats have not treated this kind of stuff in the same way. What do those associations say, whether or not the Democrats want to use them? What do they say about, about McCain and Palin? Well... There's, two, there's a charitable way and an uncharitable way to look at it. The charitable way to look at it is to say, well, these guys, as white politicians, as Republicans, as conservatives, know that their associations will never be used against them because they know who their political opponents are. They know how the game is played. Mm -hmm. They know that the, the, t the playing field is not level in this very regard. So they're not careful about who they associate themselves with. That's the charitable way to look at it. The uncharitable way to look at it is that these guys have not cared in their political careers about associating themselves with extremists and radical groups because they have extremist and radical inclinations. There's one other element to this that I don't think has been touched upon sufficiently. It may be too obvious and maybe I'm missing coverage of it. But anything that connects William Ayers to, to Barack Obama was not contemporary, contemporaneous with whatever it is William Ayers did or did not do. Right. His activities are over here in one part of history, and his association with Obama is in a later part of history. And there's no disputing that, no matter which, uh, which way you want to get hysterical about what you read in your copy of the New York Times or perhaps on a misprinted Starbucks cup somewhere, <laughs> that elite, dr elitist Starbucks-drinking governor of Alaska. But the McCain involvement in this World Council and the uh, Palin involvement with the AIP, the Alaska Independence Party, or the AKIP, these are, while those operations are in full flower, there's no distance. It's not like he's a retired 
you know, subversive over here. These are these are people who are actively involved when McCain and Palin were associated. Sure, with them. And, and you could say, listen, the Anti Defamation League had already denounced yes. uh, the group that McCain was on the board of as anti Semitic when he joined. The, the group was formed apparently as an offshoot of the World Anti Communist League. By the time McCain was allowing them to put his name on their letterhead and serving on their board, the chair of the World Anti Communist League had already been uh, kicked out of that group as a Nazi sympathizer. Yeah. I mean, all of that stuff had happened before McCain uh, joined there. Also, I mean, so so he should have known that history. You could say you could you could draw a parallel there and say, well, Obama should have known Bill Ayers' history and kept clear of him as well. The difference, though, the important difference is that Bill Ayers and Barack Obama were on a board together that dealt with inner city education mm -hmm. issues. John McCain was joining this group that was an offshoot of the World Anti-Communist League to support anti-communist insurgencies around the world. He was not joining them for some unrelated purpose that, that didn't connect to what was scandalous and, uh, and frankly, malodorous about these groups. And we're not even talking about the quality of the shoes to the, to the future, the little the future Taliban Association of Afghanistan, the uh, the FTAA, I think, or FTOA, they would have been. Rachel Maddow, we will see you again after after the debate on the 11 p.m. post uh, debate countdown special. Uh, thank you much. See you then. Thank you, Keith.